Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're gonna look at creating an ABA chart. Now the method that we're gonna use for creating the chart mean that this line, the separating baseline from intervention, will automatically move as we add new data. If I add a new date here and add a frequency, you can see that the line has moved to the left slightly to allow for the new data point. Okay, let's see how we can create this graph. Here's the data that I want to put in an ABA graph. The first step for you is to store this data inside an Excel table. The reason I'm going to do that is because if I add new data to my list, I want the chart to automatically pick up that new data. And that's the functionality that a table gives us. To put this data inside an Excel table, click into one of the cells and then go up to Insert Table. Or if you prefer a shortcut key, use the shortcut key Control T. It gives you this little dialog box just confirming the range of cells for your table. And also there's this little toggle option for my table as headers. Mine does, so I'm gonna keep it ticked. Click on OK. Now it does apply a bit of formatting. If you wanna take the formatting off or change the formatting, you'll notice there's an extra design tab on your ribbon for the table styles gallery. And in this list, you can choose whatever style you want to apply or none at all. Okay, so that's the first step, put the data inside a table. The next step is to insert two blank rows between your baseline data and your intervention data. Our intervention data starts here. So I'm gonna insert two blank rows above this row. To insert the rows, select the first intervention row and the second, right click, insert, and I'll insert two blank rows for you. Now what you want to do is copy this date down into these two rows. And you can do that by clicking into that date that you want to copy and then going to the little fill handle, bottom right of that cell, that green square. You'll notice that when your mouse pointer is over the green square, it turns to a black cross. Then hold down control and you'll see you get a little plus sign above the black cross. Hold down the left mouse button on your mouse and drag down that will copy the date down into those two empty cells. Next step is to select those two dates that you've copied into the empty rows. And we need to format those dates so that they show the time as well as the date. To do that, use the shortcut key Control-1 on your keyboard, then go to Custom. And in your type box, you'll probably already have a date format. If not, type the date format that appears there in that box. Then after that date format, put in a space, then type HH colon MM, hours and minutes, and then in capital letters, AM slash PM. Click on OK. And you'll now see the date as well as the time for those two rows. The next step is to change both of these times to PM rather than AM. So if I double click into the first one, put a space after the last zero, and type PM in that cell. Then you're gonna copy this PM time down into the next cell. So again, hover over that little fill handle at the bottom right of the cell, hold down control on your keyboard, drag down, and you should have two PM times. Now you need to create an additional column in your data, and we'll just call this line. And we're gonna input two data points for the line. The first one will be a zero, and the second one needs to be the maximum value in column C. And we're gonna use a formula to calculate the maximum value. Now this formula is gonna use the max function. So if I say equals max, open bracket, and then what I'm gonna do is select all the cells in that column. And you'll see it says frequency because it's the frequency column. I just drag that out of the way. You can see it's frequency in square brackets. Then I close the rounded bracket for max, returns the largest value in this column. If I change that seven there to a 13, it would then pick up 13 as the largest value. So we now have all the data we need for our ABA chart. To create the chart itself, click in any cell within your data, go up to the insert tab on your ribbon, go over to recommended charts. Now you will hopefully see that you have the correct chart down here in the list of recommended charts. If not, if it doesn't appear there, that's the one you want. It's essentially a scatter graph. Go to all charts, then go to XY scatter, then up in these scatter chart types, 
click on the one that says scatter with straight lines and markers then you should get this chart type here click on ok and move it over and now we've got the beginnings of our chart now just zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing the first thing I'd probably do is get rid of the grid lines in the background there. And you can do that very easily by using this plus button at the top right of the chart. If I click on that, I get all these chart elements listed in the sub menu. Now, if I don't want to show grid lines, I can just untick grid lines in that list. I'm also going to get rid of this legend at the bottom here. So I'm going to untick that. And I also want to show axis titles. So I'll tick that box there. Now let's deal with those axis titles now. What we can do is we select the vertical axis title that should read as date now the way to get it to pick up the column heading there is with this element selected go up to the formula bar type an equal sign and then click in the cell with the column heading press enter you can see that it retrieves that text value we do the same for the horizontal axis title if i select that element Go up to the formula bar, type equals, and I'll click into the frequency column heading. Press enter. I have frequency now as my axis title. These dates look a bit messy. Now the way to sort that out is to click onto the dates, then use the shortcut key control one on your keyboard. That'll open up the format axis task pane. Now if you look at the bottom here, you have an expandable section for number settings. If you click on that little triangle there, It'll expand the number section for you. You've got this option format code. We'll delete what's currently in there. And I'm going to type DD-MM. I'm only going to show day and month. Click on that. And you can see that's a lot tidier. If you wanted to show every day rather than every other days as it's currently doing, scroll up here in the unit section, you can see that major units is currently set to two. If I set that to one, and press enter. I now have every day shown on the axis. If you are going to do that, I'd probably change the orientation of the axis text. And I can do that by clicking on this size and properties button at the top there, text direction, and I'll say rotate all text 90 degrees. And I'll close down this task pane. Now to make more space for this axis title, probably what I do is just make the whole chart a little bit higher. Then if I click into the plot area of the chart. So that's anywhere with a kind of white space within the bounds of the chart. If I drag the bottom edge of that up a little bit, then I can drag this axis title down a little bit. You can actually link this chart title to a cell within your worksheet, just as we did with these axis titles. If I just move this data down a little bit, I'm then just gonna type title so I'll call this example ABA chart then what I can do is click on that title element go up to the formula bar type equals click in this cell press enter and just like with the axis titles it picks up the text in that cell if I want to change the color of the lines here maybe we'll have the whole chart as black and white just click on the line somewhere then control one on your keyboard click on the paint bucket over here in this format data series task pane under line if it's not expanded you need to expand it and the color option choose black you have to change the color of the markers separately so if i go to marker here fill i can change the color there click outside the markers can you see you have this little blue border around the markers i also need to change that so i'll click back on one of the markers go back to the marker options here Go to border and change the color to black. For this line separating baseline from intervention, if I click on the line, I'd probably want to get rid of the markers altogether. So if I go to this marker button here, it's not already selected. Then expand marker options and say none. Then to change the color of the line, go to line here, change the color to black. And then I could close down this task pane. To label baseline and intervention, you're gonna to have to use a text box. So if I go up to the insert tab on my ribbon, text button over here, and then choose a text box. And you can draw a little text box there, then just type in baseline. Then what I can do is copy this, Control C, Control V, 
drag it over here and then I can type in intervention. Just make that wide enough for the text. Now to make sure that they're aligned properly, select both. So click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the second one, go up to the shape format tab on your ribbon, align bottom. Okay, and we're pretty much done with our chart. And as I said at the beginning of the video, because we've housed this data within an Excel table, if I add new data at the bottom of my table, it will automatically pick up that new data point in my chart and it will move this line to the left to accommodate the new data. One thing we could do with these two dates here is reformat them to just show date rather than date and time. They're taking up a little bit more space than they need to. If I drag that over, that makes the whole data table a little bit more compact for you. Okay, that's it really for this particular chart type. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.